Greta Georges. This is Travel Log. Welcome to Shanghai. Now, in this episode, we're going to get to the local people's hearts and minds, and I've been told there's no better place to start than right here on this bridge, the Garden Bridge. Now, most Shanghainese will have their photo taken with a bun at the back, the Broadway mansion to the front, but without the Pudong on the right, as it's a newly developed area. So, join me on this journey as we find out what really makes Shanghai tick. Shanghai's most impressive mall lies along the banks, where the Huangpu River converges with the Suzhou Creek. Here, glorious skyscrapers line the two famous rivers, and you won't be allowed to forget that Shanghai has not only the second busiest port, but also the biggest shipyard in the world. The locals are proud of this iconic site on the Bund and enjoy hanging out here. This is called Garden Bridge in English because of Huangpu Park, which is the first Western Park in Shanghai. But locals here call this Wai Bai Du Chiao, and it literally means getting a free passage. Now you had to pay to get on the ferry, but when the bridge was built, it's completely free, and Shanghainese love a good deal. Built in 1906, Wai Bai Du Chiao is a convenient passage over Suzhou Creek. Back in 1937, the bridge was a barrier between the international settlement and the occupied Japanese part of the city. All right. Hey, you know, why not you are Shanghai people? Yeah. 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 I'm told that the real Shanghai lies just behind all the skyscrapers. My friend Xiao Wei suggested that we meet at Lao Tie or Old Street, where we'll discover something of the city's humble past. To get there was just a short step from the bun. Oh, 7 a.m. right now, and I'm supposed to meet my friend、uh, Xiao Wei. She's Shanghainese, and so she's gonna take me around. But、uh, she told me to come real early because she said there's gonna be lots of action this morning. So we'll just wait out. Welcome to Shanghai. Thank you. I guess you're hungry. I'm super hungry, man. You got me on an early schedule. Yes, I bought you some Shanghai style breakfast. Thank you. What is this? Wow,、well, it's kind of crispy stick, but in Chinese we call it yao chao. It's not all for me, right? Oh, you can have it if you want. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Is this wow? It's like fried bread. Yeah, something like that. Shall we indulge? I actually bought it there. Old Street attracts lots of foreign visitors, drawn by the promise of a glimpse of old Shanghai before it became an economic powerhouse. Here, you can step back in time and witness old traits that still resist the pressure from the big malls. Saving for a rainy day is something most Shanghainese take to heart. So rather than buying a new umbrella or a pair of scissors, they choose the cheaper alternative and have it fixed. Since Shanghai is also notorious for its wet climate. Umbrella repair is big business. Wow! So this is what they do. They just kind of hang out their laundry in the middle of the street. Yes, because in old Shanghai, people do not have so much space to live, and、oh. they don't have big balcony, so they have to hang their clothes outside. And I guess it's because of the space is quite narrow、yeah. that the neighbor relationship is quite close in such kind of area. And it's quite interesting. It's like a secret labyrinth. There's like a lane and an alley within an alley. What do you call this again? Oh, we call it Long Tang. A Long Tang. Yes. Long Tang. It's it's kind of an interesting concept because everything happens out in the street for the Shanghainese, and these people live in I think probably prime land, isn't it? Because、yes. we're right around the city as well. If you come here like 20 years earlier,、mm-hmm. it's still the same thing. And they're just hanging out. She's knitting over here, you、mm-hmm. know, sitting outside. And they chat with that each other. That lady is just washing her hair. Can you see that?、Mm-hmm. That's just. Look at that! Look at that! Right in front, she's washing her hair. Yeah. She's just scrubbing away, oblivious to the world. I mean, I would never do that. Wu Tong Road. Yes. Remember that name? Yeah. But I really, really doubt if the taxi drivers know this place. It's such a small yeah, road. They can't even get <laughs> in, can they? Yeah. And, okay. You see the pants here. Pants and underwear.、Uh-huh. I'm getting used to this. When I was a little kid, my parents would tell me when you pass those trousers, you need to jump three times, otherwise you won't grow tall. <laughs> really? Yes. All right then. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. <laughs> if I can even grow again. <laughs> 
。嗨，你好，你好，你好，你讲的蛮好的。哎、欸，<笑>今天有什么好菜？好菜多得很。The back alleys are Shanghai's link to its treasured past. In 1853, the British and French started building stone gate houses known as shikumen. Originally, they were constructed for individual families, but the reality now is that the living space houses entire communities. With the rapid pace of modernization, the quaint site of chamber pots or mato being emptied in designated areas may well soon be a thing of the past. Greta, this is the center for all Shanghai parts. All right. Yes. Well, we call it Chen Huang Miao, which means、um, City God Temple. City God, and it's a Taoist temple. Located near the temple is Shanghai's famous Yuyuan, a snazzy shopping area where you can pick up authentic Shanghai goods. It's very different from the expanses of shiny tall buildings that you're used to seeing in this part of China. The bazaar has loads of genuine Chinese craft works. Locally made silk cloth and other delectable authentic Shanghai treats. One you must really try is Wu Xiang Dou. It has a history of 80 years already, and、mm. my grandfather he will enjoy eating this with his rice wine.、Mm. The best place for a photo is in the Yuyuan Garden and this bridge. The zigzag design of the causeway is not for aesthetic reasons. The Chinese believe that creating a passageway like this can stop evil spirits from entering. Oh, I simply love the architecture here. All Chinese pavilions and shady trees. Yeah, that's nice. You see the garden over there.、Yes. That's the Yu Garden we are going to. Okay. And after visiting the Yu Garden, we can go this restaurant for Xiao Long Bao. Oh, nice. Yeah. And in the afternoon, if you wish, we can go to this Mid Lake Pavilion、oh, for a cup、wow. of tea. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, let's get going. Sounds nice. Yeah. yeah. Go. If you've had enough of the outdoors, you can enter the inner sanctuary of Shanghai's finest traditional garden. And tranquil here, and you know, just outside, there's just hustle and bustle, and I feel like this is a a little secret garden. Yes, if you are now on a new planet. Yeah. Yeah. This is um Yu Garden, and geographically and mentally, this is the center of Shanghai. Like when you leave Shanghai for a long time, you always recall this place. Wow.、Yeah. And and was it the same for you as well? Well, to some extent, yes, because that's a reflection of all Shanghainese lifestyle. Right. You enjoy those operas on the singing stage right there, and you wander around the garden and smell the flowers at such a springtime. Wow! You can really get that fragrant smell right now. Wow! You just feel that fabulous. Yeah. And you can even hear the birds singing, which is quite rare for downtown <laughs>、yeah. Shanghai. Yeah. Exactly. You know, right now this feels like we're in an ancient old Chinese painting.、Uh -huh. Isn't that interesting? Incredible. Yeah. yeah. This garden is a must-see. Its roots are planted firmly in the Ming Dynasty, when it was established by the fabulously rich Pan family. It took 18 years to create, ready to be presented as a birthday gift to the head of the family. During the Taiping Rebellion, the French fought a battle here after the concession came under attack, and the British camped right here in this prestigious garden. Well, look at that, Greta. What? You see the stone right there? That right one? Yeah, the the one in the middle with lots of holes in it. Yes, actually, that's the most expensive treasure in this garden. You kidding me? I'm serious. There are almost hundreds of holes on that single rock,、okay. and it's all natural. All right. And if you put a water from the bottom of it, and the water will come down. Come out、oh, in each of the holes. That's、like、a little mini waterfall. Yeah, but not only to that. And if you have a pot with smoke, you put it down side of the rock, and the smoke will come out of each of the holes、wow. there. Wow! So it's kind of like an art installation piece as well. What is it called? It's called the Exquisite Jade Rock. Right. And in Chinese, it's called Yu Ling Long. Having a local guide will really help, as you'll get useful nuggets of cultural and historical information. 
Oh, look, there's a little baby cub over here as well. Yes. So she must be female. You're right. And check this out. What? What's it's going gonna, to what be. What are you doing? Yeah, it's going to be chewed. <laughs> you get something? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. I feel this little ball. Yes. Oh, gosh. This ball seems to be stuck right in the mouth. I can't seem to get it out. Yeah, never think about it. Yeah. You cannot get it out. That's so interesting. Why is that? Because it is not a pudding ball. Right. But actually, when a craftsman crab this mm -hmm. lion, mm -hmm. they just shape it inside. I see. Yes. So it's like a model marvel engineering feat back right. in the Ming Dynasty. Right. That's very good technique, Incredible. isn't it? Incredible. It's really, really interesting. Allow at least half a day to enjoy all the surrounding activity at the Yuyuan Garden, as you will find many surprises hidden away. You ready? ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow. Hey. I'm just wondering why did they build this extra little slab of wall that separates the two? Well, in fact, with every step you take, you yeah. see different views. Oh, yeah, right. Mine is definitely way different from yours. But why this window? I mean, what is this about? Well, this is like a picture frame, and uh -huh. when you look out, you see a nice picture. Oh, right. Yeah. So is there a point to this, like the boys walk on one side and the girls walk on the other? Yes, it is said uh, that the girls and the boys cannot get too close to each other. Really? So, they can still talk like that. And maybe they can even sneak a little kiss in. Well, you bet it. <laughs> <laughs> Yuyuan Garden clearly embodies the traditional Shanghai spirit and it has been carefully restored and preserved. Walking through these lavish gardens, I feel it's a place where local Shanghainese can proudly claim as one of its own. Wow, that's the most famous dim sum <laughs> in the whole Yu Garden area. You can actually smell it from here as well. What is it called? It's called Xiao Long Bao, mm. and it's like a steamed bun with pork and a really nice soup. Oh, shall we have some? Because it yeah. smells really good. I think that would be a good idea. Okay. Okay. Where do we line up? Wow, you see the queue <laughs> there? I'm terrible. <laughs> so you always got to wait. Yes. This is ridiculous. We're going right to the back. Yeah. It's, it it's doesn't even end. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, I think we've got to wait probably about what, an hour? Well, I guess 40 minutes. Okay, so these better be really good. Yeah. I bet Gosh. it would be quite worthwhile to wait. All right, let's get a spot before someone nicks it. Sure. Okay. Okay. Stay and wait. <laughs> There's no lack of xiaoshi or great snacks here in Shanghai. Probably the best known is the steam bun or xiaolongbao, served by Nanxiang. It's cheap, good and very popular. Here in Yuyuan Gardens area, you can also find other Shanghai treats like deep fried pork buns and the infamous stinky tofu. <laughs> wow! Finally our turn, fantastic! You need to be careful because it's very hot inside. Now, can we see the steam just coming out of it? All right, so how should I do it? Every little bite. Yep. And then you blow into Ooh. it. Just shoot into it. Blow into it. Yep. And then enjoy the soup. Oh, yeah. wow. And then put the whole into your mouth. There's good reason to arrive early, as that way you can beat the perpetual cues. But the dumplings are so good that you won't mind eating them standing up. Taking a stroll in the vicinity of your hotel is a good way to get a real insight into the daily lives of Shanghai people. So kick-starting my day bright and early, I find a surprisingly relaxed side to the city. In cosmopolitan Shanghai, you find a range of hotels anywhere from three stars to six stars. Now, every once in a while, you deserve a little pampering and something out of the ordinary. Most boutique hotels are converted from old homes to fabulous dwellings. And I picked this one in particular because it sings to my heart. And home is, after all, where the heart is. It gets really cozy. Le Sun Shin is tucked away in a discreet lane sandwiched between Shanghai's old British and French concessions. In these tranquil surroundings, this historic estate was designed with an English rural retreat of the 1930s in mind. The 24 guest rooms mimic the European lifestyle of old Shanghai.
Well, I'm back to jump on the internet to get some directions, but I thought I'll show you this. Check this out. This is my living room. What I love about it, it's got kind of 1930s art decoration. You know, you feel like you can almost throw like a little party around here, invite some friends. That's why it doesn't feel like a hotel. It feels like my home. Check out my bedroom. The Sunshin was once the home of the famous Sun family of Shanghai. You will be greeted by a butler at the door rather than a conventional check-in desk. This is one of the charms of this exclusive boutique hotel. After resting my feet, I decided to check out Longhua Temple before meeting Xiao Wei. Can I get to um, Longhua Temple? Okay, no problem. Thank you. What's your name? Um, well, my name is uh, Jack. Jack. Hi, Jack. My name is Greta. Nice to Jack meet you. Jack, the taxi driver. Jack, the taxi driver. Huh? It's very easy in Shanghai because they do speak English. So if you make the effort, it's going to make the trip a lot more worthwhile. Hello, this is uh, local temple. Oh, thank Bye. you. Bye. Nice day. All right, I'm here and I just gotta wait for Xiao Wei. I'm meeting her at Longhua Temple, so have a go. Longhua Temple sits right smack in the middle of the city, and it's the biggest and busiest Buddhist temple in Shanghai. Two other temples worth visiting are Jing'an and Jade Buddha temples. The city also has a number of historic Western-style churches. The oldest member of the religious club, Longhua Temple, can claim to have witnessed the entire development of this city, since it dates back 1,700 years and houses a priceless 10th-century pagoda. Many of the buildings in the monastery have been refurbished and restored, but the temple still reveals an authentic Song Dynasty architectural design. Yeah, look, this is the bell tower. Nice. Yeah, let's go in. The stairs are quite steep. Yes, you really need to be careful. <laughs> careful here. You alright? <gasps> you know, this magnificent oh. bell has been here for ages ever since Qing Dynasty. Qing Dynasty? Yeah, it's famous for making your best wishes here and knock the bell. It's like a tradition for Shanghainese people during New Year's time. Oh, this, this must be the bell that I read about that if you haven't been to Longhua Temple, if you haven't rung this bell. Uh -huh. Can I do the honors? Sure. Prima. Uh, All right. Okay. Now the very first one goes. Make it the right one. Okay, I'll yeah. make it a good one. Yeah. Ooh, not bad. One. Wow, that's a one. one. Okay, here goes nothing. Woo! The best time to visit Longhua Temple is on the third day of the third lunar month. That's when the peach trees are in full blossom and a spectacular temple fair is held. Many locals believe this place to be auspicious, a claim you can test for yourself by striking the 3.3 ton bronze bell three times in the three-story bell tower. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling really hungry right now. Wow, then you got to have the best vegetarian food here. Yeah. Yeah. Longhua Vegetarian Restaurant is well known for its ingenious ways of cooking up a sumptuous buffet spread. The Shanghai people's eating habits have been changing in recent years, and they now embrace more organic and healthy foods. Most of those who eat at these restaurants have been encouraged to become vegans by their Buddhist faith. Oh, mm. mm. This is really delectable and delicious. I mean, it's so intricate. Yes, you know, the food in Wunhua Temple area has always been famous. Wow. Mm. Like, Shanghainese always came here for vegetarian noodles. Mm -hmm. And like this restaurant, it's more like a fusion of yeah. vegetarian food. Because this looks very modern to me as well. Yeah, you have Chinese and Western style. Just enjoy that. Mm. 
with this crowd of followers giving their stamp of approval to Longhua Vegetarian Restaurant, you can have no doubts about the quality and its reputation as one of the best in town. Chinese vegetarian cooking makes plenty use of bean curd to create a wide variety of mock meat dishes. So if you're missing the flavor of meat, rest assured you won't be losing out there. The food fair here at Longhua has a long-standing history, but it's been given an ultra-modern touch. And here's something for the ladies that follow that same philosophy. Well, I decided to get something really exciting for myself, and Kelly suggested I get a tea towel. Yeah, and here's the shop. You know, I heard that all girls in Shanghai would have one of these tea pao. Yeah, in fact, you know, I have my own tea pao, but even for my grandmother, she has her tea pao. She does. Yes. Wow. So it's a it's a trendy, fashionable thing. It's also traditional. Well, I guess for my generation, it's more like a fashion icon. Uh huh. Like for this kind of style, you it can go well with your jeans or even legging. You can go to a club like that. Yeah, definitely. It's really nice. I can well, so can see that party on you. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I think I should try some. I want to actually make one for myself. Yeah, they do have Taylor in the shop. Maybe oh. we can go and talk to them. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You can truly be the belle of the ball with these intricate designs. There has been a big revival of the tea pao, and now it's back as a stylish party dress. Hi, Shifu. Hi. Is it possible to make a tea towel? Can. Okay. Let's try it. Okay. Measurements. Let me take a bag. Scary. This is what a girl's got to do sometimes. Yeah. So, Shifu, if I want to make a tea towel, how long do I need? Usually, I need one week to ten days. Seven days. Not too bad. Yes. Can. But if it comes back, it can be taken back. Yes. We can. Yes. 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 It's dinner time, and we're going cheap and cheerful. This place also guarantees to appeal to Shanghai's own stamp of East meets West food fan. It's nothing like what I've expected it to be. I mean, I'm sure it looks quite different from whatever. Will you take any Western country? Exactly. So, how old is this restaurant? Well, for this new Richard restaurant, it has a history of more than 70 years. I remember when I was a little kid, I came here with my family almost every weekend. Right. You know, what's really interesting? I mean, did the decor change in any way? Because it still looks very, I don't know, original. Yes, you know? it is. It really is. If you came here like 20 years before, it's still the same. Right. Let's have a look. You know what I noticed is the way they laid out the serviette,、uh -huh. the spoon, the knife, and the fork. Yes, it's quite casual, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's really cheap, by the way. If I came here with my friend, it's probably like seventy RMB for two people. Seventy quid for two people. I can't believe it. How cheap is cheap? You just see here, you got vegetable salad for eight quid. That is awesome. Yes, and also this is my favorite soup. It's tomato soup with beef, and it's only nine. <laughs> That is a bargain. You can't believe it, right? Oh, <laughs> and they also serve very traditional kind of steak, like you see T-bone steak. Right. Check out the price. Thirty-eight quid. I'm never gonna believe it. Yeah. <laughs> so this is、um, Shanghainese Western food,、yes. and it's different. Yes, exactly.、Okay. Expect to enjoy reasonably priced cuisine, and the best part about this place is a favorite haunt for the locals. Yummy. Shanghai's dazzling array of local culture is mixed in one huge melting pot. The more I soak up Shanghai's uniqueness, the more I feel my curiosity and sense of wonder increasing. Even as this city continues to stride towards the future, I feel that its past is pushing it firmly in the direction of a more dynamic cultural and financial hotspot. There's a traditional saying that goes. Shanghai is like the emperor's ugly daughter. She never has to worry about her suitor. So, love her or hate her, you simply cannot ignore her. Shanghai's evocative past has created a can't do and a can't spend spirit. 
While the Long Tang embodies the tradition, Shanghai's culture is still evolving and ever-changing just like its cityscape. Well, putting its own unique stamp on it. I've been Shanghai, and so should you too. This is Travelog, and I'll see you the next time.